Hello, my name is Bearhead. We're introducing a new cooking program for public television. It's called Cooking with the Colonel, meaning Colonel Doug Allard, who is a gourmet chef unknown to me for quite a few years, but he's quite good at his art, and he will be showing you how to cook deer, elk, commodities, whatever you have. He's uh, quite good at it, and we hope you'll enjoy the program. Hi folks, welcome again to another episode of Cooking with the Colonel. Today we're going to do something kind of different. We're going to cook some grouse. We have uh, two kinds of grouse, uh, both that I shot in the head when we were uh, hunting. Bearhead and I were hunting. Uh, Bearhead, I have one here that has a little wound in the body. You'll see that right here. Bearhead shot the grouse in the body. The ones that are clean and perfect, I shot in the head with the 22. That, at that, about 35 feet. I, I gotta interrupt there. We have two kinds of grouse today. We have the big grouse. Uh, this is a split breast of a blue grouse. They're the big grouse and they're the choice grouse. This is an uncut entire breast of a rough grouse. These are grouse that we get up here in the mountains and most everybody who hunts here on the reservation carries a 22 with them. So in case they see grouse, uh, they can at least have a chance to get them. Uh, one day our scope went off on the 22 and we spent two boxes of shells trying to sight it in and still didn't get it. So that's when Bearhead had to shoot the grouse in the body, I think. Uh. At any rate, we do get a lot of grouse here. And for those of you who hunt a lot, uh, your hunter, I'm sure, sees grouse. And uh, tell them to take a 22 along and get one. They're delicious eating. They're different than a chicken. They're more grainy than a chicken. And uh, they don't have the dry, wild taste of a duck. Today, we're going to make something kind of different. It's called crispy grouse scallopini. And these uh, two breasts here from the rough grouse, we're going to set aside. Those were just to show you what they looked like. And these are the these are the, the breasts that we're going to use. When you make scallopini, uh, it's an Italian dish. You have to pound and flatten the breast so that it gets thin enough to cook. To do that, usually dip it in a little water first. Well, I guess it's OK. They're still a little damp. You put two pieces of wax paper one on the top, one on the bottom. Put the shiny side of the grouse up. You take a meat mallet, and I don't have a meat mallet, so I'm using an old-fashioned uh, ice cream dipper. It's all the same, and you, you start from the center. You start from the center, and you gently pound. You gently pound it out so that it's thinner, that tenderizes it a little bit, What you're trying to do is get a nice, thin grouse cutlet. That's not quite thin enough, so I'll do it a little bit more. I feel like Michael Jordan. I put, notice my tongue is sticking out when I pound the grouse. That's about, the, uh, that's about what you want your grouse to look like when you're finished. I'm going to do these other blue grouse breasts. They're the biggest, and then we'll do a couple of the, a couple of the little ones. When you're, when you're pounding these, be sure to go gently, because if you go real hard, you'll put holes in the breast, and you'll also put holes in your wax paper. And the wax paper is only good for about one breast on top. And then you have to change it. 
but you want to get it thin down there so you got it to below a half inch in thickness and for the dish we're making we're going to broil it and if you don't get it that that thin you put it under the broiler and it's going to be too thick to do a good job with. Another piece of wax paper here. I pretty well shot that one down. one's a little smaller, didn't take quite as much time to pound down. And here's our last one here. We're going to do four of these today. The smaller ones you have to be even more gentle with. Oh, I guess I may as well do these others too while, while I'm here. Just take a minute because they're small. That's too small. And there's the last one. There are many ways to cook grouse. This is only one. But this is an interesting way to feed your family some wild game in a way that they haven't had it before. Now, after we get the, the breasts all ready to go, we're going to take a dish here with a couple of egg whites. A little bit of water. And then we're going to uh, mix up here a cup of breadcrumbs, see if we got a cup here, oh, not quite. That's about right, I'm going to put a cup of breadcrumbs in there, I'm going to do about, I think, uh, Two tablespoons of fresh chopped parsley, which I have already done right here. Ooh, this looks pretty. Then uh, two teaspoons of minced garlic. I like garlic, so I'm probably put a little more in there. Maybe three. Put a little uh, pepper. We're going to salt the breasts a little bit, so I'm going to mix this up here. I use the uh, minced garlic out of a bottle because I like it better. You could mince your own garlic, which I've done many times, but this uh, minced garlic out of a bottle is a real standard flavor. You, every bottle tastes just about the same to me. Whereas in garlic, if you use little tiny hard garlic, you get a real strong taste. If you use great big fat elephant garlic, uh, which really isn't real garlic, then you get a mild sweet taste. Pretty good. Put a little pepper in there. I like garlic and like pepper, so everything I cook has a lot of garlic, a lot of pepper. And uh, as my kids grew up over the years, whether they liked it or not, they ate garlic and pepper. Lo and behold, as adults, what do you think they put in everything they cook? Garlic and pepper. Now, what we're going to do here is get our broiler pan ready. Turn on the broiler to high. 
which on my oven is at 500. Get it ready for this. And then what we're going to do is put a piece of ham on each side. Each side of the cutlet can overlap a little bit. Then we're going to dip that first in the egg white and water. Then we're going to dip it in the flour mixture here. Then we're going to set it on the broiler just like that. Little bigger breasts just fit this ham. A true Italian cook would use prosciutto ham for this operation. Prosciutto ham is a smoked ham that's been hung for a long, long time and is very dry and very strong. It's also very uh, tough. They slice it just paper thin and that's the dish they normally, or the ham that they normally use for this dish. But here in Montana we don't have any prosciutto ham so we're doing the rest, best thing and using sliced boiled ham. If you use other ham it's too thick and when you put it in the broiler, uh, you have to nearly burn the thicker ham before you ever get the grouse done. More here to go. Now this is the one that Bearhead shot in the body. You see it's got a little ha stuff hanging there from it. Not nearly as pretty as the ones that I shot myself, but I didn't get enough for the whole thing, so that's the way it goes. I Big, doubt if you're going to get a beggars can't a be five chasing. today after statements like that. <laughs> He's mad because I give him an eight and a half for his. Swiss steak, and he hasn't forgiven me for that, so now he downgrades me at every chance. I made the best Swiss steak I ever made in my life. Bearhead tasted it, said this is the best Swiss steak I ever ate in my life, but I don't like Swiss steak. Eight and a half. After all that work, all that time doing that, and that's the best I could do. Well, I got a couple little more pieces of ham here. And Got to put the ham on that one. It's not very good covering of ham. That's all I got left. You have to cover this pretty good because what we're trying to do here is not only get a little flavor in there, but we're going to try. We're trying to get some crispness into it. And that's why this is different than your regular scallopini, because regular scallopini is fried in a pan and is, is not crisp. We'll move all this other stuff aside here now and see what we're doing. Put these over here with other breasts. I spill stuff all over and rarely clean it up, but since we're doing this on TV and I want it to be neat, I'm going to clean it up today. Usually I just let, leave it lay. That's some vegetables I'm going to steam there, so I'm going to... Now, what we're going to do here 
is to drizzle just a little bit of oil on the top of each one of these. This is olive oil. Not too much, but just a little bit so you get some flavor from it. I hope you can see I got my finger over the bottle. I'm not just pouring it out like that. Okay, then we're going to leave that here because we're going to do a, after we flip it over, we're going to do that again. Now you put this in the broiler at about the second from the highest setting. Set your timer for three minutes. And sit back and wait for it a little bit. And we'll see if it comes out after we take it out. The first time we're gonna turn it, put it in for about another two and a half or three minutes. And then we'll find the final test, see if Bearhead likes it. Okay, while we're waiting here, yeah. you got a straws here, you get Doug? Well, he, number one, he, uh, he, I got to admit he's a good cook, but he's a terrible shot. And uh, he's also uh, plays with the truth a little bit. Uh, the truth is that my grandson shot those, uh, those grouse, Thomas John, when he was with us one day, and I missed and Doug missed, and. Thomas was wanting to shoot, so we let him shoot, so he got the grouse one day. And those are the grouse we're cooking. And he, there's no getting around that. Now, uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm not questioning his cooking, but he's still mad at me because I gave him an eight and a half of that Swiss steak. And I still say, if you want to ruin a Swiss a steak, Swiss it. Now, the the sirloins that here, tenderloins he cooked with the Swiss steak were excellent. And the deer heart and the deer liver we did on the other show was great. But he, uh, <coughs> little pouty. He's a little pouty. You know, why I ever picked Bearhead as my tester, I'll never know. Because I'm the Epicurean expert. He has on a, a very That's limited. Well palate knowledge and today what I'm cooking is a little over his understanding so he'll probably give me less than a 10 because he doesn't he doesn't he thinks scallopini is Italian shoes or something like that he doesn't know very much about stuff like that but we're gonna try him anyway if this doesn't work we're gonna go back to boiled potatoes boiled meat <laughs> and stuff that's simple for him to understand He's still pouting. Now remember, I like my grouse. You can't cook grouse rare, you know, Douglas. Is you sure you're giving it enough time? Those uh, breasts are a little thicker than uh, you normally would get when you make scallopini. So it's probably gonna take more than the three minutes on this side because uh, in, in looking at them, I, I can just tell from looking at them that uh, they haven't had opportunity to cook. I didn't put them right on the broiler. I put them down the next notch because I didn't want to burn the, the top on there. We'll check those out now and see how they're doing. And the way I check them is the only way you can check them. You take a knife, you take a fork, and you find the thickest one kind of cut into it, see if you've cooked any of your chicken yet. Cooked some of it, we're getting there. Take a little while, a little while longer. We're, we're gonna, off now. We're gonna cook duck. Mountain sheep scallopini. Fish scallopini. Fish scallopini. That's an idea to cook that duck scallopini. No, it's too, too dry. Too dry. I don't think you could take a duck breast and do it like this. 
Why? Duck's too dry. Duck won't pound out like this. If you pounded the duck breast, it would, it would just come apart, I think, because it's long, stringy meat rather than, uh, rather than being, you know, soft and pliable like chicken or grouse or ptarmigan. <laughs> I'm sure ptarmigan is soft and pliable. <laughs> you read a ptarmigan? Is that right? Well, that's right. You stayed up there a lot. If you ever go to a real good restaurant, every now and then you'll get a piece of meat that has a little slice in the side. So the chef in that restaurant is doing the same thing too. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't hurt it any. We got to give this just a little bit more. Now my vegetables are steaming here. Are them fresh or frozen? I don't cook frozen stuff bareheaded. Good thing, because I don't eat frozen stuff. Everything you get in this house is fresh, including the cook. Hit a little. Watch him complain about, the, about this. He say, "What'd you put that on here for? You can't eat it." It's good for your breath, and that's all it's good for. Diet food. Okay, I think we've got some grouse scallopini ready to eat. Try this one right here. I'll give it another little cut to make sure that's done on the inside. It is. Cut those in two, Doug, so we can share them with the crew. Oh. Cut those other. You two. thought you were going to get that great big one, didn't you? I better check this one. Better, because I'd downgrade you. I'd get you if it ain't cooked. Okay, bearhead. Here she comes. The test. No, the baked potato's not done yet. Well, I know what baked potato tastes like. Okay. There you go right there. Got some butter for this. We do have, but I want you to taste the scallopini. That's what we're cooking here. Everybody's looking. I got it. Now, what if I... What if you drop it down the front of you on your shirt like you <laughs> usually do at the Old Timer <laughs> Cafe? You can always tell what Bear has had for lunch in the afternoon because if he walks in and talks to you, you can see either ketchup, mustard, gravy, or whatever on his shirt. Now you missed the piece of ham on the bottom. You got to get it all. I'm the expert oh, here. The I'm okay. the expert here. Go right ahead. Pretty good, pretty good, Douglas. You don't want to hear pretty good, I want to hear some numbers. He's doing, he's right here and I can't. I got, I got to give him a 10. A 10, wow. I got, and Bearhead doesn't even know what scallopini means. And uh, <laughs> I got to give him a 10 on this one. I uh, Pretty good way to eat grouse, would you say? <clears throat> fast, too. Fast. The whole thing, the whole thing there takes 30 minutes or so. And that's it. Can I get the whole thing. How is it? Mmm, that's wow. excellent. You like it that mm. way? Mm-hmm. You ever eat grouse that way before? No. Did anybody it's so else? tender. The first time it's ever been made. <laughs> the reason why is he's never killed a grouse. I'll bet you wouldn't have to cut that with a knife. No, you, you can wouldn't. cut it with a fork. It's That's because right. pounding it, pounding it out, you get the good flavor. Yum. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for today. Another segment of cooking with the Colonel and tasting with the Bearhead, who for a change today made me happy and gave me a tip. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the show. <laughs>